Hello everyone and welcome to a Looking Forward special. In April of 2015 I had started this series called Looking Forward. I only did three episodes in it. Uh, in that time I introduced an antimatter SSTO, this X-Wing, which was also an SSTO though vertically launched, and this antimatter production station. So I haven't really done anything with this since because it was a very unwieldy install. However, now OpenGL works a little bit better with my system, so it's not so bad. And I decided it was time to run again in the wake of the Star Wars movie and all that to try out this X-Wing to see if I could use its warp engine. I've never used the warp engine from the Interstellar pack before, this Alcubierre drive, and I want to see how it works. I haven't watched any videos about how it works or anything like that, so I'm just curious. Now, uh, uh, unfortunately, my radiators on the X-Wing weren't uh, placed very well, so they're sort of clipping into each other. The X-Wing does produce quite a lot of waste heat. Let let's go through this, because, you know, it's been eight months since I even looked at this save and posted a video in it, so just a few notes. The station has uh, most of the hydrazine here. There's the hydrazine. Food, water, and oxygen all over the place. Right, uh, the station has a lot of water storage because that's what the X-wing runs on. Let's take a closer look at the X-wing. Uh, it has antimatter scoops here, and then this is an antimatter containment unit, and you see it doesn't have that much antimatter right now. And here is the water, and then the antimatter uh, goes through the water, and there is a reactor here. So antimatter reactor and a thermal rocket nozzle where the water spews out. I don't know, if, I think it, the antimatter should actually be connected directly to this reactor, but uh, this seems to work. Well, it certainly worked to bring this up, because that, those antimatter nozzles, antimatter uh, powered thermal rocket nozzle, I guess you could say, with the water coming out, worked to bring it to orbit. Anyway, very complicated, but it generates an awesome amount of heat. And if I close these radiators, it'll start really uh, getting hot, so that's a problem. The warp drive is actually powered by this. This is actually a fission reactor. So we have antimatter reactors and a fission reactor here. The fission reactor attaches to this electric generator, which produces megajoules, which is used to generate exotic matter and you can see that the Alcubierre drive is full of exotic matter right now. It is 38% charged, I don't know what that means exactly, but uh, we seem to be uh, targeting a light speed factor of 0.1 C, 0.1 times the speed of light. Anyway, otherwise the station itself produces antimatter. It's got these huge reactors here, these are fission reactors as well and those fission reactors supply power to these electric generators which provide power for these labs here which produce the antimatter. There, science laboratories all producing antimatter, uh, sucking up quite a lot of power. In fact, uh, this isn't enough power for them, they could uh, take up like five times as much as they're getting right now. But anyway, um, I guess we'll, we'll try this out. I'll disengage this from the station, and then we'll have Bob Frod Kerman, who is on board the X-Wing, try out the whole idea of, let's say, going to the moon with the warp drive. I guess that's a fair target. It'll allow us to try it out uh, multiple times to see how it works. Let me retract the radiators now. Now I think we need Bob Frod to pop out to disconnect his vehicle. We're connected via Kerbal Attachment System. Oh, I should mention, this is 0 .90 still, right? Because this is all the way from back in April. So this is still a 0 .90 install, which is why you can get clouds around Earth. Oh, yes. <laughs> in case uh, that, that wasn't clear. Uh, this is, of course, Earth that we're around. No point having the interstellar stuff if you're not around Earth, right? I mean, it's overkill for Kerbin. So yeah, we're, we're around Earth. There's Australia and everything. And the wonderful thing about .90 is you could have clouds around Earth and the interstellar pack and you didn't kill your RAM situation completely. 
though uh, I did have enough trouble that it uh, made it difficult to run this particular series. Okay, so, uh, yeah, um, where's Bob Fraud? We've got all the scientists in the station who are making antimatter and are very excited about it, but we don't need them. We want Bob Fraud to EVA. Right. And can you grab that from there? Yeah, unlink. Unlink. There we go. That's exactly what I want. I think we are completely free of the station. The X-Wing does have, uh, well, we can see right here, MMH and N204 to maneuver, and so I'm going to activate RCS and use that to maneuver away from the station because it's. I don't want to turn on the antimatter engines here. Now, with the X-Wing, the, the wings aren't obviously in the correct position compared to the real X-Wing. Really, they would be mounted here, not on these nacelles here, but uh, there was no way to do that and uh, make it work. Uh, normally the nacelles move with the wings and all that. It's very complicated, but I had designed this to work with FAR and it didn't really. I tried my best, but uh, I, still, I still couldn't get it to work with FAR properly. Um, so that's why I had to launch it vertically. Okay, well anyway, frame rates around the station are going to be really low, so I'll, I'll come back to you once we've moved out of uh, render distance. Wow, I forgot how bad the RCS was on this thing. What kind of RCS thrusters do I have? Look at, look at my relative velocity not going up very much at all. I'm still only at 0.1 meters, per, oh now I, well, I'm at 0.15 and around to 0.2 there. But uh, we're using a lot of uh, MMH and N204 to do very little. Um, what kind of ports are these? Ah, yeah, thruster blocks one half. Uh, we, we probably needed the full thing. I guess I'll try and run the engines. Um, I can't even turn very well here right now. We pointed sufficiently away from the station so that when I run the engines, I'm not going to bump into it. This is horrible, actually. Now, of course, it's realism overhaul. There's no uh, no torque, no reaction wheel power. Well, let's run the engines. Okay. At least there's sufficient control with that. Okay. Alright, well, now we're pulling away. Uh, the Delta V reads a little bit weird. But I, I think I believe it because we're, we're full up on water. The question is whether it's reading the antimatter properly. Because, yeah, we've got, we've got enough water to have 12,000 meters per second of delta V. But do we have enough antimatter to feed that? You see, it's only really thinking about the water. Still, I think we have enough juice so that we can use our antimatter engines to go to the moon. We don't have to use the warp drive to go to the moon. I think we can do it with just antimatter. But the whole point of this is to test out the warp drive for the first time. This is my my uh, my end of year thing. Seeing if I can figure out this warp drive for future adventures. Uh, I sense a problem. I, I feel like I'm not I'm not disconnected from the station. I thought I had disconnected from the station, but it's it's moving in response to my my thrust. This is not good. I'm going to use the time warp trick to stop rotation. I don't know if that's safe or not, but okay. All right. Did that knock us free too? No. Oh crap. Okay. Now we're all rag dolly. Great. Okay, so this is a Kerbal Attachment System problem, obviously. Um, hmm. Maybe I should just launch this from scratch. But uh, Would it be safe to EVA Bob Fraud and try to grab that attachment point and maybe that'll do the trick? Well, we have to do something drastic, otherwise we're gonna be stuck here. Well, this might be another reason why I didn't continue this series, I don't know. I don't remember. EVA? Uh, of 
Grab that. Whoa! Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so there was a glitch there. That, that, yeah. Okay. Okay, um. No, I don't care about that. Oh, jeez. I think Bob Fraud is glitched out with the thing. It, it, how, how's the X-Wing? <laughs> no offense, Bob Fraud. Huh. Yep, um, hmm. it's, it, it's abundantly clear that uh, Kerbal Attachment System has made this whole thing really, really bad. Yeah, look at the warp drive. I think I'm gonna launch this again. Yeah. Let me restore the save, and I will, I will launch it from scratch. So, uh, so that Bob Fraud is still safe with the station, I don't want to do this to him. Okay, well, uh, I guess let's try this again. I don't exactly remember how this is all supposed to work. Um, now the, the reactor is activated for the antimatter. That's uh, that's all right, I guess. We've got a six degree inclination with the moon, but that shouldn't be too hard to deal with with a warp drive. So no worries there. We we won't be able to transfer directly to the moon on the fuel in this if we. Uh, if we don't refuel at the station, so so that's a downside. I don't know if we'll be able to slow down at the moon once we get there as a result of that, because we'll be going pretty fast. Uh, we'll be going orbital velocity. Unless we transfer to the moon when we're not... I, I don't know. If we, if, we, if we are still suborbital when we transfer to the moon using the warp drive, then we won't be going quite as fast. I don't know if that's a safe thing to do. Uh, okay, so thoughts, many thoughts. Uh, how about this reactor? This reactor is active. And are we generating... Okay, we're generating exotic matter. Alright, so all systems are go for Curlo Kerman. It looks like the relative inclination is going down, so let me time warp a little bit. Let's see, waste heat. It's not being produced yet, apparently. Okay. Exotic matter is being produced at a prodigious rate. In terms of food, water, and oxygen, uh, we have enough for 90... No, no. Uh, hmm. I don't know how many days. We'll see. Probably a long time. 704 units of food. Probably like two years. One or two years. Okay, this should do. Uh, throttle up, I guess. I don't remember how to fly this thing. It's bound to be a little bit difficult. Yeah. Alright. Uh, ignition, I guess? And launch. That's two G's of acceleration right on launch. Uh, allow me to throttle back just a little bit. Oh no, this is tilting. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't remember this sort of thing happening. I hope these uh, thermal nozzles have... Yeah, they have some gimbling, but not a whole lot. I didn't have SAS on. Okay, uh, let me try and rotate. Let me try and rotate the right way around instead of upside down. Ooh, boy. This could go bad any time. See, when designing it, at least I know how to fly it, but this is going bad already. Ah, okay, hold on. Let's let's not go too fast here. Let's go into airplane mode, maybe, so that I can get back to the direction. Of, at least I got 12,000 meters per second of delta V. Hmm. Yeah, okay, 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 this is ridiculous. Let, let me revert to launch. I, I didn't remember how to fly this thing. Okay, here we go again. Let me see if Smart ASS can figure this out. It's probably better than me handling it manually, because this has a lot of power. But we'll see. I've got throttle up, SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. And launch. Let's just go straight up for a while. 
I feel that this is a wise thing to do. Let me see, um, yeah, like that. Uh, this doesn't seem too sure of itself. Yeah, it's having trouble with the roll, isn't it? It's not doing too badly, though. In the new version of Smart ASS, you can disengage, stop it from uh, managing the roll. Here you cannot, not in point nine zero. Um, I'm just gonna switch back to SAS. I think uh, it was wiggling about a little bit too much for my taste. I'm gonna just keep going up for a while. I want to get out of the atmosphere where firm aerospace will be likely to rip apart my wings, you know. Just seems prudent. And also in point nine zero, there was a lot more overheating issues when you were in the lower part of the atmosphere on up through about 40 kilometers. So if you can get beyond 40 kilometers quicker, that'll be safer. I can start rotating now though. Unfortunately, I don't have ambient light adjustment in this install. Uh, I hear some overheating stuff. Um, maybe I should cut down on the acceleration, come to think of it. Let's get beyond 40 kilometers. I don't like the sound of this. Let's go 2 G's until we get beyond 30 kilometers. Thankfully, uh, these thermal rocket nozzles you, you, don't, you can throttle them simply by adjusting how much water you're passing through the reactor, so. So it's not unreasonable to have full throttling capabilities. Looks sort of like a ghost at this point. Ah, I forgot I had, I had added lead ballast in order to quote unquote shield the Kerbal from all the radiation. I don't think that's enough lead for that, but at least I tried. At least I made a minor effort on that. More overheating sounds, 26 kilometers. I must have had a pretty specific trajectory that was supposed to work with this to avoid all of this nonsense. Yeah, I better not lose control. We know deviating from the prograde vector is probably going to be bad for this. Well, presumably we don't have to wait for any sort of transfer point to get to the moon. We will just point at it and go light speed, right? Again, I haven't tried this before, but the main thing is trying to slow down once you get there, which we probably won't have enough fuel for since I'm not refueling at the station. And it looks like it's probably not safe to do so. This doesn't carry a docking port. It was always meant to refuel using KAS. So, so yeah. Probably no safe way to do it. Okay, maybe we can accelerate now. Still keeping under 4G for Curlo's benefit. Well, unfortunately in the dark I can't show off any better angles for this thing. Well, let's check if a uh, direct transfer to the moon is a doable thing. In which case, we could probably just fire away. And a direct transfer would be if we could actually see the moon, right? I mean, if we saw, we, if we could see the moon, we could uh, just head over there using our light speed drive, light speed drive. But we can't see it, so we can't do that. Okay, well. Uh, very little can get into orbit faster than an X-Wing. We've already got a decent apoapsis after three minutes of burning. And uh, velocity-wise, we're almost halfway. If I, of course, push the acceleration to the max, we could get there even faster. Alright, I, I, I think I'll, uh, I'll just coast to apoapsis here. So yeah, the limiting factor is water. If we had more water, we could uh, transfer over to the moon, but we don't have the water for it. Antimatter seems to be fine. 
I mean, transfer to the moon with the with the antimatter engines. We will have to rely on our exotic matter, and once we arrive at the moon, we'll probably be going too fast to slow down. Okay, here we go, Curlo Kerman, about to make orbit here. We are approaching apoapsis and also approaching orbital velocity. And how much food did I put on this thing? Uh, we have 234 days. Okay, that's that's less than I thought we had. 700 units of food in this version was only 234 days, huh? Okay, that's a fine orbit. 209 by 169 is excellent. Unfortunately, like I said, we didn't uh, reserve enough fuel in order to transfer directly to the moon. But that's alright. I think, uh, well, I better quick save here. And then we'll proceed with the with the Alcubierre drive. So F5, quick saving, very good. All right, well, let's see how this works. Time warp until we see the moon. Well, we see the little pink marker on the nav ball. I still can't quite see it. Wow, okay. Well, I'll have to trust it's there. Um, it says ready. Okay, actually, let me let me F five here. F five in here. Okay. Um, all right. Activate warp drive. Whoa. Um, let's take a look at what's happening. Okay. So, oh wow. I think I'm in a crash course with the moon. Hmm. Interesting sound it makes. So here we go, folks. We are uh, warping to the moon. First time I've ever, I swear, ever tried out this warp drive thing. Um, it used a set amount of our exotic matter, and it's not using more than that. So it uh, used uh, 95 units of exotic matter, but not more. There's no way we are going to um, make orbit around the moon. I guess the main trick will be not crashing into the moon. Let's see if we can do that. Oh, it just stopped uh, making the sound. So, uh, 3 million meters per second. So we've got there. I thought it was, uh, wasn't it 300 million meters per second for the speed of light? So isn't this 0 0.001c, uh, 0 0.01c instead of 0.1c? Am I missing a zero somewhere? Lunar transfers sure take a while like this. <laughs> oh dear. Can you imagine? These X-Wings, they've got it made. So, I mean, the suspense is killing me here. Two seconds, okay. We're gonna cross SOI boundary soon. Well, I do have to stop this darn thing. Okay, uh, deactivate warp drive. Okay. Oh, we're, we're pretty far away from the moon, huh? So, uh, let's say we wanted to get into orbit. We're going very fast, though. See, it's, uh, we're basically trying to kill all of our orbital velocity around Earth which we still have. Because we didn't sort of lose it coming out here. Yeah, that's pretty much the exact situation we've got. Hmm. So, I guess igniting the warp drive in the lower atmosphere would be better? Okay, so new strategy, I reverted and the plan now is to wait until the moon is like directly overhead and then just go. We'll try to escape the atmosphere as quickly as possible. We'll reserve a lot of delta V, but we're not going to try and make orbit around Earth. No, we are just going to go straight for the moon. 
once we uh, get high enough and I feel like we're out of, uh, you know, the grip of aerospace effects, well, not aerospace effects, aerodynamic effects and heating and stuff like that, I'll ignite the warp drive. All right, so throttle up, SAS is on. We don't need FMRS, uh, but uh, actually we want to time warp until the moon is overhead. Right now it's on the opposite side of the planet, which is not very helpful. So we don't even care about relative inclination anymore. It's not going to be directly, directly overhead, but maybe it'll be close. Oh, ship charge? What? No. Ship charge is fine. No one wise confused. Hmm. Now let's not time warp too fast. Let's get it all lined up there. We could probably, I mean, it won't make too much of a difference right now, but let's just get over to the southerly point. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, I think we can go. Throttle up. Right, ignition. And launch. Launch. Okay. So we're going to be headed south right now, upside down. Let's, uh, let's try and turn it around here. Slowly, sl carefully, carefully now. Okay. That should be... Roughly our launch azimuth, if you will. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wobbly, wobbly. Don't be wobbly. We'll hold it at about 3 Gs here. Oh, there's definitely some lag right now. <laughs> Clouds and all. Daylight. Daylight provides extra lag. Hey, aerodynamics are rocking it back and forth a little bit. Maybe I should actually escape the atmosphere. We don't have to go to orbital velocity, but we can go beyond the atmosphere 130 kilometers just for safety's sake. Depends on how much delta V I have left. If I've got a fair amount left, maybe that's what we should do. Overheating sounds again. Okay, let's go to 2G's. Just to avoid any problems with that. So, so point a little bit higher, match our prograde vector. So, can't really see the moon. Uh, no, there it is. There's a little dot. There's no way. The moon should be bigger than that. Still getting overheating sounds, so I'm trying to be cautious here. It's not like we're going that fast, actually. I mean, uh, this is, you know, Mach 2.3 or so. Many a plane has traveled at this speed. Not at this pitch, though. Most planes would have a little bit of trouble keeping up acceleration at this pitch at this speed. So if this works, with a warp drive, you would be able to transfer to the moon with a fraction of the actual delta V. You know, uh, if you'd like the chemical delta V, I don't know what you want to call this, the antimatter delta V in this case. That you would if you had to do it, you know, getting into orbit first and then transfer using a uh, translunar injection. You'll see. I'm just trying to establish an apple apse is about 150 kilometers. Now, all of our velocity is actually towards the moon, which is interesting. 
has interesting implications for when we get there. I wonder what will happen if, since our velocity vector is pointing directly at it right now, instead of going into orbit around Earth. Right, uh, around, in orbit around Earth, our velocity vector wasn't pointed at the moon. Right now, our velocity vector is, and that's the velocity vector we're going to be carrying to the moon with us. So in theory, we're going to be in a crash course with the moon when we get there, after we take off our warp drive. Um, Smart ASS is not having a fun time with this particular craft. Okay, I'm going to shut down the engines. And how about RCS? Can you do that for me? Okay, so we're going 2,200 meters per second. We'll be going much slower once we get uh, get to our apoapsis. We'll be going 1,995 kilometers, uh, 1,995 meters per second. And then we will go to the moon. There, just a tiny little hop there. And once we get there, we'll go zoom over to the moon. Our velocity vector isn't quite at the moon, actually. It's a little bit offset because of the vertical speed bleeding away due to gravity. So it will be a little bit askew. Now, if this works, then technically we could just point at Jupiter and do the same thing. This has enough delta V to go to Jupiter and make orbit around it. Or even Pluto, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Well, uh, this, I, I should point out, because it's point nine zero, they aren't named the right thing. See, Moon is Mun, and uh, so they, they have uh, the Kerbal names of everything, even though they look correct. But uh, yeah, I think that's Pluto. What is now called Val. Hmm. Anyway, let's try the Moon first, one step at a time. I might be totally thinking about this wrong, so gotta take that into account. All right, well, well we're high enough. Let's go. Um, let's activate the warp drive. Okay, take off smart ASS. We are indeed on a trajectory to the moon. We will have a moon encounter in a minute and 35 seconds. So what we do with that at that point, that will be the question. Wish I could see the moon approaching. I guess it's in the dark. Watching the earth receding is good though. It's only been five minutes since launch. We'll be entering Moon Sphere of Influence in five minutes and thirty seconds after launch. Good times. Okay, we are in the Moon Sphere of Influence. I've deactivated the warp drive. Still ready. Very good. And look at that, it's not a bad pass actually. Can we uh, add a maneuver? I think the lesson is going to be with a warp drive, for warp drive, space travel is a lot more like the way most people think it is. Point straight at something and go. Still, you have to slow down to make orbit and stuff like that, but. Hopefully people realize that uh, orbit doesn't just happen automatically. But So a bit of a radial burn to bring us closer to the moon and then we'll have an orbital burn and we'll make orbit. No wonder is the RCS was working so badly around the station. We were tied up with the station using KAS. It's working a little bit better now. Still could use some work though. Alright, here we go. No, that's pretty low right there. Okay. The ominous dark moon approaches.
We have about 1,500 meters per second to get rid of here. And before anybody says it in the comments, this is in fact a moon. Alright, this is a moon. Okay, here we go. Wish it was brighter right now. It would be really cool to see the lunar surface when doing this. You can sort of see it there, but... Yeah, could have been better. Okay, that's really tight. Um, let's point prograde and undo some of that, because that's getting into we're bumping into things territory. But yeah, well, uh, from the surface of Earth to lunar orbit, 5,000 meters per second to spare. Um, thank goodness for warp drives. Now, I don't know what would happen if we just pointed at Pluto and... and uh, went with the warp drive just like we did here I mean just waited till the target was above us and went straight for it I also don't know whether uh, we can time warp while using the warp drive even at the speed of light it takes a few hours to get out to Pluto does that mean I would have to run my computer for a few hours or can we time warp during the warp hmm but those are questions to be answered for another time. Uh, here I'm satisfied with my first ever use of a warp drive and excited. This is hilarious and uh, wonderful in its own little way. And antimatter reactors, warp drives, the nine, whole nine yards here. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And Merry Christmas, everybody.